play and call it work. Hey there, Wargamers. Josh and Luca here to bring you our review of Necromunda Underhive. Underhive, specifically. Yep. Yeah. So this is everything out of the box and not including the expansion Gang War, which yes. is a separate book. Uh, at the time of filling this, Luca and I have finished up our six-game uh, mini-campaign, linked campaign. Yeah. Uh, played out of the box with the scenarios. We randomized the order a little bit. Yep. Uh, but we use the suggested starting gangs as well as the suggested uh, terrain setup for each Every of time. the games. So, hmm. <laughs> See, hmm. Josh and I are on like the different. I will give you guys. Okay, one. so this is a spoiler warning. If you haven't watched the games yet and you don't want the games spoiled in any way, here's your chance to go ahead and not uh, listen to this review because we are going to talk about our experiences with the game. Yep. So ready? There's your chance. Yep. That, that was your last chance to stop watching the video. Ready? Three, two, one. Josh is disappointed. I'm unenthused. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Now, everything I'm going to say, do your best. Take it with a grain of salt. 100%. Because at the time of us filming this, did you just raise your hand? I'm over, and remember, and remember, this is for gang war. Uh, this is not for gang war. This is for underhype, not gang yep. war. Yep. Very different we games. Haven't, we haven't properly played any uh, gang war games yet. Exactly. Now, also while we're filming this, um, we haven't seen any of the stats. I don't know if they're up or not, yeah. uh, but I haven't seen any stats for the legacy rules for the other gangs. Yes, we only know the stats for Goliath and Escher. That is it. Yeah. Now, I will say that when this was announced, I was super excited. So was I. Uh, I am a big fan of the specialist games of the past. Yep. Uh, the Necromundas, the Mordheims, all Battle that good Fleet, stuff. All that. Battlefleet Gothic, uh, Titanicus, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, they're all good. Solid, solid games. Now, I was not super experienced with Necromunda. Neither was I. Um, I played much more <laughs> Mordheim than I did Necromunda, but I did play a little bit of it in the past. And there's a certain kind of cool feel to it. So... I will start off with talking about um, playing straight out of the box because I, 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 there, there is good to this. It's not the, all bad. I will say the game is. I was playing Goliath again. If you watched the videos, Josh was playing. I was playing Escher. House Escher. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, opening the box, they have given you two different ways to play the game, yep. which is Zone Mortalis and Sector Mechanicus. Sector Mechanicus, it. which is it's the, basically a two D board or a three D board. Yeah. Here's my starting gripe. Yep. You've got two iconic gangs. Escher and Goliath. You have got Escher, which is more mobile, better long range, pretty mean up close still with some... Very agile. They, you know, like an assassin play style, almost. But, but some pretty solid weaponry here. Yeah. And then you've got House Goliath, which is all about brutal, close combat. Slow and purposeful. And, yep. you know, really solid, uh, shorter range shooting. Yeah. And you put them on a board, which is typically, what, like two by two? Maybe oh, like the, the scenario setups? The, I'm yeah. talking about the, the tiles. Yeah. So the, the tiles are one foot by one foot. Right. So, yeah, two by two or two by three, depending on your kind of setup. Yep. It kind of neuters everything out. <laughs> yeah. So the gripe here is, the issue here is that House Goliath is just so... With the way the alternate activating works, which we'll get into. Correct. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit. But just, just strictly, I, I'm of the mindset that Necromunda doesn't work on a 2D board. It doesn't work in Zormit House. Maybe once in a blue moon it'd be kind of cool, but it's the same as saying that, you know, standard 40K and Zone Mortalis 40K are the exact same. They play the exact same way. Now, like, my opinion is you got to remember that. They gave they simply gave this as an option to play. It's like almost, ne it's essentially Necromunda Light. And if you want to play Sector Mechanicus and you have the old, like, 3D terrain, the big epic buildings, and there's just a really condensed table of terrain, you could play, say you play five games, you do four games, that then you do, like, one, they have the rules to play a Zone Mortalis game if you wanted to, if you have the tiles. Then they give you the tiles in the box. Yeah, so I mean, I do appreciate the fact that um, they've they've given you what a way to play Necromunda, yep. Underhive, straight out of the box with tiles and yep. all that. Yep. And I appreciate it for what it is. I still know what I expected. Yeah. You know, it's it's. I'm not going to complain about getting something extra, even though I'm sure that it does factor someone into the cost of this box set. Yeah. 
you know, you'd rather when just... my when my grandma buys me socks for Christmas, it's it's cool. It's a gift. It's a, it's cool. I like it. Uh, it's not an Xbox. No, it's not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's. Lee's laughing in the corner. Lee's sitting in on this. Um, so yeah, no, I do appreciate that they've they've given you a way to play it, but uh, don't call it Necromunda because it's. Not Necromunda. It's maybe set in the Necromunda yep. universe. The only time... Okay, so the thing that is... It's Necromunda Gang... Not Gang War. It's Necromunda Underhive. You're pretty much stuck playing Zormort House the entire time, which is, can be unnerving, yep. especially with the Escher vs. Goliath. Now, if it was Escher vs. Escher and Goliath vs. Goliath, or who, know, who knows what the other warbands look like, the other factions, they could be completely different. But with the Goliath vs. Escher, it was... If you watch the campaign, spoiler again... I won five out of the six games, crushing victories. And the, the yeah. one game I won was because you killed me too fast and couldn't yes. complete your objective. So the way the, the way the objectives were set up in that one, Josh lost all his models in like three turns. I couldn't. I didn't even have time to get to the objectives so I could get to them. Now, granted, my rolls weren't great, and I'm sure I could have had some really kind of sneaky tactics that might have been able to pull some stuff off. But I do feel like you had the distinct advantage. No, I'll, I'll agree 100%. Um, it felt like I was playing a video game on easy. Yeah, there was. Yeah. You just kind of walked forward, holding the trigger down. I mentioned that in a couple post game shows. It was just I move, I move model forward, I take a shot, and without like I'm not even thinking. I'm, there's no strategy. I either hit him, and if I don't hit him, oh look, one of my models is in the way. I hit my own model. I kill my own model because I'm a strength five gun. Typically, you killed. I more killed of more your own of, guys with shooting than yeah. I was able to do in the any entire way. campaign. Yep. I killed more of my own guys than Josh ever did, and I didn't even care. I lost one guy. I got nine more. I have six more. It, it didn't matter. So. That, you know, the, it, it is a big disappointment for me. There's positives we are going to talk about here, but we're strictly talking about gameplay stuff right now. Yes, and this is, again, I'll say the, <laughs> this is Underhive, not Gang War. This is Underhive, not Gang War, because we haven't played Gang War yet. Now, one thing I will, what I said earlier. And this is Underhive with the two starting gangs that you get out of the box. Again, this is like Necromunda Light in a way. At least in my opinion, this helps you get into Gang War. This helps you get more comfortable playing Gang War, which can have more obscure situations. Right, you know, yeah. I, I do think, you know, a 3D board helps to mitigate some of the the issues we have. It was basically me running down a hallway trying to avoid you. Yeah, and when you're playing Gang Wars, all of a sudden you have the 3D terrain. Uh, a lot of the stats, you, your guys were... I could, probably, I could probably typically bring more uh, firepower to bear. Exactly. Um, because you were stuck you know, with your loadouts. The way they right, were. and it's pretty narrow hallways because it's, it's Zormer Talos. And you just There's very pistols. little option that you have. Well, I got las guns and all that, too. Yeah, but I got flamethrowers and grenade launchers. Right. In, which, a, in a Zormer Talos setting. Exactly. Yeah. Now... That's one thing. When we are playing, the the whole you being strength toughness four versus me strength toughness three. Yeah. And they say that there's ways for me to mitigate it, but the ways that I have to mitigate your high toughness is to essentially make you take toughness checks. <laughs> yeah. Which surprise, surprise, when you have good toughness, you get around it. Now, some of you Necromunda veterans there might be a little bit confused because I did confer with uh, Lee himself on this, who played a lot of Necromunda, and, and talked Chris. to Chris as well. Yeah. Uh, who, again, played a lot of Necromunda back in the day. And I said, you know what? Uh, how bad was House Goliath back in the day being Strength and Toughness 4? That's not And I was told they weren't. <laughs> so th another thing that comes up to, to mention here, Lee had mentioned that, who knows, Strength and Toughness 4 might be the new thing. You, because we only know Escher and we only know Goliath. So all the other basic factions could be Strength and Toughness 4 as well. But then... It could not be, right? Making Goliath. So one of the weird things is, I think my Juve is like 15 points more than yours. Sorry, yep. more than yours. But I come automatically with a 5-up armor save and plus 1 strength and toughness. I would, that's right. super, that's so much well, value that's there. that's the other thing too, because now that you've got, you know, um, mine are all armed with flak armor that works yeah. against your grenade launcher. My it one weapon. Kind of, it works a little bit better. I get a 5-up save. Yep. You just have a 5-up save if I shoot you with something in the front heart. Yep, if I'm just, I got a 5-up save. And then, like a las gun doesn't have any penetration. So what they've done is they've created a game where they took the melee warband, whose weakness would be their slightly slower movement yeah. and their shorter range shooting, and they gave them better toughness, better armor, and put them on a board where it 100% it mitigates, I think, all their weaknesses. Now, I, I'm curious to see if other people when they open this box up have I really, a, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just like, a crazy person. Josh has said this multiple times. Maybe he's just playing Escher 100% wrong. Maybe there's just, a, yeah, maybe there's... Now, part of it comes down to, um, in the past with games like this, and Lee in the corner will nod or shake his head to confirm or deny what I'm saying, it was the traditional, I go with my entire gang, 
And then you go with your entire yeah. game. And then the scenario dictates who goes first. I'm waiting for the nod. Yeah, he's nodding. Yeah, okay, he's yeah. nodding. He's, he's nodding. Anyways. He's definitely nodding. The scenario No either, obscene gestures at all from Lee. The, the scenario would um, dictate you either go first through a roll or you go through go first if you're an attacker or a defender. Right. And then that would just carry out through the rest of the battle. So part of the tactic for some of these shooty... Because I have a lot of strength three guns, right? But, uh, but you so do have a lot of them. Fives. That's the key factor. Right. Well, I mean, you have a bunch of strength five guns. <laughs> no, what I, what I, what I want to lead into, right? You have your If your entire so, warband was to go first... Well, and the the idea would be that I didn't want you to charge me, so I do my best to shoot and pin. Exactly, you shoot and pin against Goliath, and that's the key strategy. Now, here's the thing for for I think your playstyle. I'll, I'll sum it up. You walk forward. I, I I move four, and then sometimes I move four again. Well, you and you move your whole <laughs> gang up. Yeah. Because you know that my shooting isn't going to do much. It'll pin and one then, guy. And then no matter what, even if I get priority in the next turn, if you have two guys in charge range, you can only pin one. I can pin one of them. That, now that's granted somewhat offset by the fact that your leader can bring along extra... Yes, so best case scenario, your leader brings an extra guy, you pin two of my chargers. That's hard it's to do. It's still... Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't work. I don't know yeah. why they changed the mechanic to being like that. Essentially, I wait until the turn that doesn't happen, and then that's when I take over. Right. And when you... I mean, you, when you are in combat or you're shooting, typically you're hitting on... Fours. Fours. Well, fours with shooting, and in combat you're hitting threes. on threes, yeah. usually. And you're wounding on threes or twos. Twos, especially if I stim up. And when I'm fighting at my best, uh, you know, shooting a las gun at you, I'm usually hitting on threes if I'm in an yeah. ideal range, wounding on fives, but then you get a five up save. Yep. Yep. I still get that five. Which, by the way, I made a. I'm not a mathematician, of. but I don't know. I don't think that that no works. <laughs> it's especially uh, usually with with the very tight setup on these tiles for. Underhive, my the guys with the stub cannons, a strength five, 18 inch range gun. I open up a door and I'm in range to shoot right away. Yeah, who cares? Which it, just it, takes 18 usually gets you shooting wherever you want. Yeah. Um, so typically, you know, I see a house escher gang playing of you know moving back and shooting. Yeah, that doesn't work because we're in some narrow little hallway. Yeah. I need to try to move to get line of sight on the Goliaths and shoot at them and hope that works. And if it doesn't, I'm just gonna die. Essentially, the only times you came really close was when you were able to pull something like that off and you threw a few flesh wounds on me and then you went into combat when I was already right. flesh wounded up, and then which made your built-in abilities so much more effective, especially the gas ones. Correct, Ooh. correct. So, I mean... There was a few times, again, where you got really lucky, you spiked high with a gas weapon, and like my leader had two wounds, but it doesn't matter. I rolled out of action, right. and then he was gone. Well, I look at and the, the, the part that I don't get... That's a lucky roll. ...is uh, Blood Bowl. Lee and I started playing Blood Bowl before Games Workshop officially re-released it. Yep. They took the living rule book that had been, you know, beloved by many for X amount of years. And again, I'm going to look for knee, uh, Lee's nodding here. Uh, I think they basically copied and pasted it. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. They, it was the same game because it was a good game that worked. And people genuinely enjoyed it. And it, for some reason for Necromunda, they're like, you know what? Let's just change a bunch of stuff. Well, <laughs> they changed, yeah, they changed the wounding chart to 8th edition. I don't think that's bad. That's not, that's yeah. not, well, the, the, the biggest thing is the alternate, well, I mean, if it would have just been heavily more in my favor had it not been, right? It's true. Yeah. It's true. So it's, it's a little bit better that way. It's easier. Uh, the alternate activation, at first, I don't mind, I've never minded alternate activation in a skirmish game, but it's a big drastic change for Necromunda. That's a huge change for Necromunda. I don't, yeah. I personally don't mind it. It's rough. For Josh, especially when you're playing that shooting army, when you're only pinning one or two guys, yep. and I'm slowly getting in charge range. Well, here's the thing, okay, so I'm going to use the example. I'm going to talk about stuff, and and folks will, will probably realize um, I'm no Necromunda expert, Not obviously. No. Uh, but I've had a real keen interest in House Spire. And I think one of the weaknesses of House Spire is how easy it is to pin them all. Because yeah. there's only, I think you're bringing like maybe five or six of them to a game, typically. Yep. And when you're facing off a warband of 10 plus, it's easy, even if they can't damage you, when their whole gang activates, they can get pins on you and pin yeah, you down. Pin the entire Spire warband in one go. Instead now, I mean, like, obviously they've changed rules. The Spire um, could be completely changed. They, well. they might be, but under that, that idea of, you know, I have a more elite uh, gang, yeah. you're going to pin one, then I get to activate one? Yeah. Just then I'll pick one of the ones you didn't pin? Yep, could be. It doesn't work. I don't. I don't get it. And I might not have all the pieces to the puzzle as it stands right now. I don't know why they just didn't re-release a game that's been around for a long time that people liked. I feel like they could. 
I don't know, maybe people don't like the your warband goes, my warband goes. I don't mind, again, I don't mind either or. I see how they can both work. They, they both require different strategies, obviously. You have to adapt to this new one if you want to learn how to play the game. But the old one worked, right? Yeah, and that's my point. If it's not broken, why, why try yeah. to fix it? Uh, so... I, and there's a, there's other specialist games I'm hoping they come out with. And, you know, after seeing Blood Bowl, I was excited. I'm like, they're just going to re-release all these awesome games, give yep. us some new miniatures, and bring fresh blood into playing these games. Now, I'm seriously concerned for things like Titanicus. I'm seriously conf- uh, concerned for things like... Um, more time if they do uh, Battle, Battlefleet. More time. Uh, Battlefleet Gothic. All that stuff. Yeah. I don't know. And, again, I go back to, because I've had the same conversation when I talk about Warhammer Fantasy, is just play the old rules. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I will do my best to, you know, play the new system as it comes out and try to understand it. But as it stands right now, without all the information that I need to properly make the decision, I can't see me playing, wanting to play this new edition of Necromunda. Well, who knows? Over can... the old edition of Necromunda. That's true. Like, you could play Gang War and the alternate activation could work fine. We're not too sure yet. It could. Yeah. But my point is that we know that the full activation Works already fine. did work. Yeah. So I'm all for trying new stuff. I'm all for improving. It's just... Then again... I, may, I, I don't really get messing with the classic. I will say that it was pretty frustrating to face an entire shooting war band and have your combat-based one pinned every turn. That could be not fun. Well, I mean, yeah. So you were able to kill three of mine a turn instead of four. <laughs> I think more frustrating is not being able to actually do any damage to your enemy. Yeah. Because, like I said, it's the, it's all the crazy dice rolls. I think a lot of that comes from the the tight confines of what we did play on the tiles. And that was, yeah. you know, so... Because <sighs> your guns were 24 inches, and you didn't use, like, nine of them. Well, yeah, because yeah. it's we're playing on a two-foot-by-three-foot board. Yeah, at most... And we're used, starting deployed six inches up. You at most used 18, which is rare. You were no more than nine inches away. Most of the time, At yeah, because of how tight the, hall, uh, the hallways were. So give yourself a four by four table. All of a sudden, you get those two extra rounds of shooting against me before I even get close to you. So, oh, and I have places to retreat through. Exactly. And still shoot. So I can move back that five and shoot. And then the initiative stat will come into play more when you're right. jumping roof to roof. Yeah, so I mean, that's. And I would never be able to keep up with my initiative four as Goliath. But I mean, that strength up to four would take a long while. So part of my concern or my thought process, I guess, for this is the fact that maybe they have designed the game around the gang war rulebook and the changes make sense when you play gang war. Yeah. But they sure as heck don't work for Underhive Underhive for me. It's my opinion as it stands right now. Who knows? I might be totally wrong. Um, I'm disappointed that they messed with a classic. It, it, I agree with like the vibe I'm getting from like Josh and like Lee, like Lee agrees he, he he misses the old your warband goes and like my warband goes like it's something people are used to, right? And it, it did work. I won't argue that. Yeah, and I mean, so I, like the, the like it's kind of like killing my vibe because I'm kind of going more towards your side. I figured it'd be like Josh. Well, argue- I remember because when we played when we played yeah. the first game, we were like that was pretty close, and it was a relatively it was close a really game. close game. Um, and then we played the second game, and it was an absolute slaughter. And we're and like, like yeah, it's dice. dice. It's dice. And then we played the third. Then it happened again. And then the fourth. And then it happened again. And then the fifth. It happened again, but you won. Well, yeah, yeah. I won because... I literally won because the game ended too fast for you to do anything. Yeah, I came, I came in through all the doors. Um, and was... I won by not taking anybody out and by having all of mine die before yeah. you could get to where you need to be. And again, in game five... Which isn't really a win. I mean, like it's not an entertaining win. It's not... No, it's not. rewarded for skilled play. No. Hey, we talked about it before we played, and I said, I think the smart thing here for me to do is just to go into that chasm and jump over it with my <laughs> uh, my whole gang until, you fail until they initiative. filled initiative and just fell in. Yep. So the thing was, I killed... Or to try to just kamikaze and go into combat with you. Just, and just end the game faster. Have you... Not to try to do any damage to you, to actually just to have you kill me yep. as fast as I could have happened. Because I, even in that game, I killed more of my, my warband. Like, you, you sent two into the pit. I failed my initiative checks. They fell into the pit and they died. Yep. And then I went on to kill two of my own guys voluntarily because I didn't care. Yep. I didn't need to, and then I still went in and tabled you. Right. With no, with no problem. So, and Underhive I'll, for me... It could have been like... To sum it up, it, I, I feel it was poorly implemented. It, it feels like one of those things that, you know, it was a Friday afternoon, and they said, <laughs> hey, we got to make a game. Uh, like this gang war thing is pretty cool, but we have to make... 
Yeah, we're going to re-release Necromunda, but we got to make rules for everything that comes in the box. Uh, to, Billy, make rules. Yeah. Like I, I uh, no I, no I, offense I, to Billy at Mini uh, <laughs> Games Workshop. But, I'm going to get the, the email from Billy at Mini Wargaming. <laughs> and no, you know what? There's there's obviously there's all sorts of different uh, factors of why decisions may have to be made in certain ways. So I'm not by any way begrudging the people that that created this. Yeah. Um, I just would have rather you copied and pasted. And saying all this, I'm but I mean, they, they they wanted to make a rule set to play the game straight out of the box. But I think this is going to be um, it might be similar to other the other games. Remember uh, Betrayal at Kelf? Yep. That and you remember the really cool thing about that board game? Mm. Neither do I because I, <laughs> I didn't play it because uh, I bought that for the models. A hundred percent. So this so is what this box is. Is, is that like. what it is? I mean, I mean, I. I'm not saying no. The, the rules are all right. The, the rules are used in that use in Gang Warfare, but the rules would work way better from what it looks like on paper in Gang Warfare just by looking it at it. It should. I mean... It, yeah. Well, because in, in Underhive, you barely use half the leadership stats. You use NUR, cool checks, and that is it. <laughs> well, let's not even go to cool checks, right? <laughs> well, I mean, my the other thing, because we, we... I don't think there was any time we really had to worry about using intelligence or will. It was cool checks over and over again, yep. and your most basic guy, and you're trying My to Jew. roll. You're trying to roll your cool check or over. Yeah. So Luca on two d six had to with his basic guy. My Jew. His, his crap ones. Yeah. Had to roll a five up. Yeah. My on 2D6. leader. The best one, the coolest of the cool. Was a six. It was a six up. Yep. And my, All my regular a... scribs were eight ups. Yeah. So and your you leader was a four up. Four up on my leader. And the way that works is my leader passes. That means everything within twelve of him auto passes. So I all I do is roll two d six. And a four, and I was good. Josh had to roll a six at best, but typically an yeah. eight. Yeah, typically an eight, and that led to a lot of losses, hundred percent. Yeah, because you use cool check for for the the nerve tests. Nerve tests uh, when you're something goes out of using it you. for uh, when you bottle to see if you run away off the board or not. And priority targeting as well. Like I would. Yes. Well, that's the other thing is I got a shooty. I got a shooty warband. Yeah. I keep seeing warband gang. I guess it's a gang that. Um, if I want to shoot something other than the closest model, I take a cool check. Yep. On eight. So all I had but to do... But when the close combat dum-dums want to do it, they can do it on a five? Yep. So if I want to shoot your leader who's hiding in the back, I just all, all I do is roll five on 2d6 and I'm good to do it. And that's a strength five shot at your leader who's got a six up armor save. Yep. And I'm hitting on a four. 50-50 to hit her. Six up at best. Six up at best. Well, my that's guns didn't have, have any AP. AP. My guns didn't. Some of them did. Well, my shotgun, the, the, the all-star shotgun, the combat shotgun, thing's insane. So I'm not really sure. I mean, they've added in a lot of unique stuff for the gangs. They've added in a new new gear for yes. them. Yes. So instead of the old Necromunda where everything drew from the same pile of weapons and war gear, each thing has their own specific war gear they can buy from. Now, they're still like, everything still by respirators and um, all those other, like stem. I'm pretty sure you can buy like all the normal war gear. But like the weapons are tailored to certain. There's there's certain yes. Yeah. Well, I think there's certain ones like um, the war gear for the the chems that I can use. To oh, the make gas my, weapons. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, the one that I can use on the knife. Oh, right, same with your yeah. stims that you can take to boost your stats. Yes. Is that speci- I can't remember if that's specific to Goliath. It's specific or not. to Goliath. Um, well, thus far, it's specific to Goliath between the two warbands, yeah. gangs. Um, yeah, because the stims let you get yourself to toughness. It was a uh, strength toughness six. Right? Yeah, the stims are plus two movement strength and toughness, and those that that lasted and it cost no action. Yeah, it was it was just free to do before now, I do any There's actions. a one in three chance you take an injury roll. Yeah, but when you're using it just to to wipe out the other team, uh, yeah. the other gang, it doesn't matter because our guys are supposed to be want. valued at one to one. So as long as I take out one one of your guys on a one in three chance, I might go out. Right. So I mean, it's yeah. it's kind of a winning thing. I don't know, like... It, okay, we're, like, obviously the, under high, wasn't, it didn't feel balanced. It, you know what, it could have been a very <laughs> rare it, skew. For, for, it, maybe. It could it have felt, been. If, in my mind, it feels poorly implemented, and I can only hope it's not indicative of future Games Workshop releases. It might have, it, it, I agree, it feels like you're mostly buying the box for the rules and the models. Because I would be baffled if the same team that worked on Blood Bowl worked on this. I would be absolutely. I I would love to get the chance to talk to them, and kind of understand the thought process here. But saying all this, gang gang wars. Are you still excited? 
I'm less excited, but I'm still looking forward to playing it. See, now I'm very excited but for Game But I'm Wars. not going to, like, I was gung-ho ready to go out and buy my Spire Warband or the old models and pay, like, 40, 50 bucks a model, because who cares? They would have been cool. Uh, I'm definitely not going to do that now. <laughs> um, I'll play whatever the studio gets and see if it's decent. Uh, I was ready to jump in, you know, both feet and go all out and go, I'm going to be a Necromunda guy from now on. Dang. But if this is what it's going to be like, ooh, I don't know. I gotta. I, I'm taking a step back to actually, um, really, really think about where my hobby dollar is going to be spent. Well, yeah, you're gonna wait to see what the other war bands look like. Yep, and see how I'm gonna play a couple games of Gang, uh, Gang War just to see how it feels and see what the legacy rules look like. And maybe this is all a fluke. Maybe, like I said, I'm missing a part of the puzzle that I'm not getting. There was something maybe. Because there's still the chance, I mean, we could have made mistakes on stuff. Or, Might have. I'm not, I, I really don't know, but something feels not right. And I can only hope that it's not, the thing that's not right, I hope it's not the game. I hope it's something that we were doing. I feel like the rules are solid. I greatly enjoyed the rules, especially the rules for the scenarios. I just figured it was not, the, 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 the gang, the, the boxes, the gangs in the boxes just weren't 100% balanced with each other. Yeah, and I, I'm curious to see if the other ones make any sense, but... It almost feels like one of those situations like uh, the the team that wrote the rules for Health Goliath were on that end of the building, and the team that uh, wrote the rules for Escher were over there, and they yeah. they missed their lunch meeting to actually make sure that they made sense with each other. It just it felt like Goliath was like if you take if they you know they release all of the gangs and it'll be like a rock paper scissors chart yeah. like Goliath beats Escher Escher beats X X beats Y. Well, then it's just boring because it's whoever you brought. I mean it's not. It's not the Necromunda of old. And I sit here and I kind of chuckle to myself at how excited I was for this when it was announced. And typically I uh, get accused of being the G-Dub fanboy because I tend to really just like every, most of everything they do. And I can find the, the silver lining on most yep. things. In this, I mean, the, the silver lining of all this is the fact that the, the models look really cool. Oh, yeah. Models and cool. they're plastic. Um, yeah. Lee's laughing in the corner. I don't know. I guess the, the, the Zomortalis tiles could be cool coasters. You know what? One of the things I felt about the Zomortalis, like buy two boxes. That way they give you enough tiles to actually play a 4x4 Zomortalis game with those rules once in a while when you're playing your Gang Wars campaign. So the Gang Wars campaign will feel very similar to the Necromunda of Old where you buy your gang, you spend a thousand credits. They all level up as they play. Some of them die. Some of them lose legs. Some of them, whatever happens, right? And then you play five games. Maybe you play one game on Zormortalis 4x4 table. Maybe. I, I don't see why not. I like the rules for Zormortalis. Or you just throw them like Frisbees. Throw them out the window? That's littering. Oh. But so was, so was the Frisbee thing. You're not going to pick it up. It was going to be out the window. You can oh. throw it down the hallway. Oh, Somebody right. will pick it up. Yeah, you're serious? No, it'll probably be me. <laughs> yeah, we're getting a little bit off topic. I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling to be positive about this. I, I really feel like they're, the ball was dropped on this. I'm still optimistic about Gang Wars. I figured that Under High oh, was going to... I'm still yeah. somewhat optimistic. I figured Gang it's Wars It's just was... I'm severely disappointed. I keep cutting you off. <laughs> I feel bad. Gang but Wars Under High <laughs> is bad. Yes. It was, it was, it's not a great box set. It's, it's you know... <sighs> Under Hive is just an out-of-the-box game with rules just to get you there for Gang... It's Necromunda light, like very light. It's not 100% balanced. Hopefully it doesn't turn people off the game, which is what Josh is mostly that's, afraid of. That's that yep. my legitimate concern. As much as I'm kind of like trying to be somewhat comedic about my disappointment of this, yep. is that I think if people play this this Necromunda Underhive and think that this is what real Necromunda no. feels like, Please, that no. they'll go, oh, I won't even look into this. Like, no. Like, if you're going to play Underhive, if you insist on playing Underhive, it might be weird. Buy two boxes, you'll get all the extra models. At least use the 16... Yeah. Zomer Talus Talus. At some, least use that. Some people might have fun, but, you know, when Lee and I talked earlier, it felt like... I remember when I was learning 3rd uh, Edition 40K. Yeah. And I was playing my Blood Angels close combat-based army. Yeah. And I'm playing against... I can't remember what he was using. I think it was Iron Warrior Shooty. And we went to go play, and he went, I don't use any terrain. It's boring. Yeah. And I went, well, isn't it important for my army? Like, won't... Like, isn't it a yeah. part of the game that's fundamental here? And he went, no. It doesn't really matter. I mean, points balance it out, right? That's what right. you said. Points yeah. balance it out. No, the, the the concept of playing on a smaller board with less shooting lanes doesn't work. Unless you have two equally shooty gangs. Yeah, well, that's a terrible game. 
Yeah. Or like the Catachan guy who says, let's play only in forests. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the Catachan player of old, uh, third edition, that goes, hey, you'll be cool. Let's play on an entirely forest board. That'll be balanced. I'll bring my Catachans. You can bring, uh, whatever. I don't know, your shooting thing that can only shoot like a couple inches through the trees. <laughs> That'll be fun. That I will agree that's kind of what Under High feels like with yeah. the Goliath for a Sesher. And I haven't played a ton of games, but I've played six so far. Six is a, g- a it's, good it's amount. It's a pretty solid amount. We literally the played the rule book. Right? If it was it was super swingy back and forth, no, five out of six games were just I don't even I could have not shown up. And it would I could have you could have had the cardboard cutout of Josh. Oh right, and that I just you have a recording of me going, okay, <laughs> that you just play each time you kill my guy. Yeah, there and was that would have been the same game for you. I think that would have been just as exciting for you as having me actually in the room. It was I, the first two game. I had fun in the first game. It was a very close game. That yeah, was actually a relatively entertaining game. The second game again, I thought it was dice. Now, after that, I Looking realized back a little bit, you kind of now I'm like oh, the third game wasn't very fun, and then it got progressively worse after that. By the time the last game came around, it was zero interaction. Yeah, almost. I don't know. It felt like playing solitaire. Yep. Yep. And like easy solitaire. Yeah. <laughs> the, the one where you can take back your moves? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that didn't work. Was... I look at the top three cards of the deck before I, I do anything. I don't know. Like, <laughs> it, this is. You it know, was no interaction. Like, yeah, it was. You this caused is one, one wound to one of my guys. Literally, this is probably one of the most boring games I've played. In quite a long time. Now, if you're like, if, if it was swapped around, we'd probably have the exact like you would have probably you would have had more fun, obviously, playing Goliath. No, had, I don't think I would have because there's, no. there's there's no, you know what I mean. We could have uh, played rock paper scissors. And then, but um, I get I get to know what you're gonna throw before yeah. we play. Yeah, <laughs> like we could have played rock paper scissors, but you're only allowed to throw rock. Oh, let's play yeah. a game. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's not fun. Rock always wins. Maybe up. if I. <laughs> So, my my final kind of consensus on this, because I don't want to just keep going on and on and on. And I mean, I know I will get emails. And I know there will be comments on this video that I will do my best to reply to for at least a couple days after yep. it goes up. And I will reply to the emails, josh at miniwargaming.com. Overall, um, you know what? I would have been more satisfied if they didn't try to turn this into Necromunda Light. If they were just like... Here's the gangs. Like you didn't want Underhive at all. Here's the book. It's point for me. It is playing a game of Underhive is near pointless. So you, you wanted pretty much the box that has the two war ba- like the two gangs in it with the give gang the, wars give, rules. Give that's me it. the gangs and the books and we're good. Yep. So Maybe give pretty me some, much a little bit of three D terrain so we can get started. Uh, some people might disagree, but once you've played a game or two of Underhive, if you haven't played Necromunda and you get the core concepts of the game, just go right to Gang Wars. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'd say skip it. Uh, the models are great. Yep. Models are fantastic. Uh, you get a little bit of cool terrain for like some doors and other stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, funky. Make your own warband too. Don't use the pre like maybe play the one tutorial game in the book with the predetermined warbands and then make your own warbands. Yeah, I would really recommend. Um, Do it 100. percent Make your own warband. Not gluing your, your yes. models together. Please don't. Make your own warbands. You know, use a little bit of sticky tack and maybe start with the starting one. But yeah, don't. They're not well thought of. Nope. As I hiccup. Because there is, even though they're monoposed, there's there's still some Tons customizability in it. Yeah. Um, they've done a really clever way of that. So, I mean, that's a, a huge positive for yeah. me. Um, they all have scenic bases too, which is nice. Yeah. The, the scenic bases are fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, the tiles aren't heavy enough to use as paperweights. Nope. Um, I don't know if they would work as kindling because I don't know if there's some sort of uh, coating on them that would be toxic. So... Yeah, um, <sighs> they they kind of warp. Yeah, they warp the rule book. The, the, <laughs> yep. So overall, you know what? <laughs> they dropped the ball. In my opinion, they dropped the ball. This very well might be you know when we see the game release proper and we see um, what kind of support they yeah. give it. My opinion might change, but as it stands, now, I think it will. I think it will. Disappointed. I think it's just the under high has got Josh and us. A huff, right? Well, it's so much it's it's not Necromunda. It's like, not. It's I not. would have had much more respect for this release if they had said, you know what, we're not going to bother using the Necromunda rules for Underhive. Yeah. We're going to make a board game. That has it's going to be a straight up rules. board game, and it's going to be uh, squares that you move along, and yep. you don't need a measuring tape and all that. And then because keep... at least they're not trying to sell this as budget Necromunda. Yeah. 
I'm still excited for Gang Wars, but I agree the Underhive boxes. Uh, just get the models. <laughs> I wait patiently to see what uh, the they're other, gonna release so yeah, we can gangs. hopefully play some proper Gang War. And if not, uh, luckily there is still an awesome community out there uh, playing Necromunda proper. Yep. So I'll play against you guys. <laughs> Just make your own warbands, guys. Play Gang Wars. Maybe do one practice game. I'm noticing now in the framing, as I complained more and more, I kind of like hovered over you, and you've gotten shorter and shorter throughout this entire video as I kind of like attack you for trying to defend this. It's, it's fun just to get into the mindset of how the game works. Other than that, just play Gang Wars. Throwing cupcakes at the wall is fun too, but I wouldn't recommend it. Well, you want to throw a little so bit guys, of you <laughs> want to throw a little bit of cupcakes at the wall. Yeah, but you get bored after a while. Yeah, when you get bored, you go eat the. I don't know. Do, don't throw cupcakes at walls. Go play. Yeah, a game. and that's 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 moving on from playing Underhive to playing. But that's what I'm saying. Go actual you, you go play one game of Underhive, and then now you know the basic rules of the game, and now you can play it proper. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> uh, hopefully, you found this at least somewhat informative. Uh, again, I, I tried to inject a little bit of humor into my disappointment of this. Uh, there's definitely some positives. There's amazing new miniatures that came out. Um, yeah, remember, Josh just lost six games in a row. Yeah, but it, it didn't... It, I wasn't even really playing. I just kind of showed up while you rolled dice. Yeah, that's fair. No, you got to do the outro. I got to do the outro. Yeah. I, I was going for it there. I am Trying you. for you. Yeah. I'll let All you right, do guys. It. With that, I'll sign us off. I had fun playing Underhive. Josh did not, which is fair. I act Okay, I had fun for the first two games. And I am looking forward to Gang Wars. I am looking forward to making my own warband. I will be sticking with Goliath because they are surprisingly... Well, not surprisingly, they are my place. I like the big tough guys that move slow, that hit hard. Why are they toughness four? I you know what? I'd be perfectly happy if they were strength four, toughness three. Or you know yeah. what? Even strength three, toughness three. Their weapons are more than enough to give them the advantage in combat that they need. I do find it weird that strength four, toughness four. We'll see what the other warbands have. If they're all strength three, toughness three, we know there's an issue. Yep. Maybe the other war bands are cheaper. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Folks, feel free to chime in on this. Like I said, I will do my best to be interactive in the comment section for the next little while. Or alternatively, you can send me an email. I warn you that um, lately I do receive a lot of emails, so it's taking me longer to get back to folks, but I will, especially though if it's a, if it's a complete wall of text and you ask like 20 different questions, it's going to take me longer to get back. Yeah. But I don't mind doing the correspondence back and forth, you know. And if you want to email me as well, look at Mini Wargaming. I have a little bit of lighter load, so <laughs> as I don't have to organize all the emails. So if you have any questions, shoot them at me. I'll be on the comments as well. So. Thanks for tuning in. Keep being awesome, guys. And as and always, happy wargaming. Happy wargaming, guys.